appeared on Death Poetry and in the award-winning film Slam Nation. Here is one of America's renowned spoken word poets, Bo Sia. Teacher, teacher, there's so much I want to learn. Teacher, teacher, I'm asking for your help. Teacher, teacher, you don't have to be board certified. This hand is being raised for everyone willing to see that they are my teachers. And like a child, I learn from more than lesson plan. And like a child, I want to understand more than the quadratic formula. And like a child, I too am a part of the future. The future being shaped all around me. The future being shaped by you, my teachers, whose choices will show me whether or not we will continue to resort to war as an answer. If we will continue to see individual gain and communal gain as separate, or if we will ever find solutions for problems that go way beyond multiple choice teacher. How can you ignore this moment in history, calling you out, demanding that the best in you rise to the occasion so that you can become the teacher we've been taught times like these need? Because if we can't leave the children behind, then we can't ignore that we must educate each other better in order to make that statement true. Because whether or not we are listening, the children are to what our choices value, no matter what our words claim so teacher as we're working towards improving literacy, math, science, scores. Let us also work towards giving literacy a power beyond reading, math a use beyond endless numbers, science a world worth exploring its grand possibility in. And let us also value the results of helping another in need, of encouraging within ourselves something larger than career, and of listening for that raised hand and everywhere screaming out, teacher, teacher. And like a great teacher would say, I believe in you. I don't care if you've never tested well in this before. I believe that you can teach a better world into existence in every moment of your life. And as you're struggling, just look around you. There are teachers everywhere patiently urging you on ready because they know that you can get better grades. The report card of your life is not out yet. And the future, children and all, is waiting for you to teach it, to graduate with honors. Sendana. This summer, Margaret Moran was elected national president of the League of United Latin American Citizens, the oldest, the oldest and largest Hispanic civil rights membership organization founded in 1929. LULAC advances the economic, educational, health, and housing rights of Hispanic Americans. And I'm happy to be here with Gregory Allen Sendana, Executive Director at the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, the first and only national organization of Asian Pacific American Union members. He is a former president of the United States Student Association and steering committee member of the Generational Alliance. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Margaret Moran, national president of the largest and oldest Hispanic civil rights organization in the country and Puerto Rico, the League of United Latin American Citizens. It's an honor to be here today at the One Nation Working Together March 
and to stand united with diverse coalition members. I have the special opportunity to share the stage with my colleague, Gregory Sendana from the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance. LULAC has long collaborated with the Asian American community to uphold human and civil rights and to ensure equal access and opportunities for students of all ethnic and racial backgrounds to achieve the American dream. Today, we stand with veterans, youth, faith groups, labor and business leaders, new immigrants, and U.S. citizens to demand jobs, justice, and education for all. We want the opportunity for hundreds of thousands of our youth to contribute their talent to our economy and their service to our armed forces. Each year, 60,000 DREAM students graduate from high school. We want these top young leaders to obtain higher education degrees so they can access advanced career opportunities and fill the gaps in high demand career fields, such as medicine, education, law, science and technology. We want all young residents of our great nation to have the opportunity to achieve the American dream. By bringing students out of the shadows, they will contribute to the U.S. economy, pay taxes, and become productive members of society. At a time when the U.S. armed forces are in need of recruiting new and young volunteers, the DREAM Act will allow qualifying youth who wish to join the armed forces to have that very opportunity. Thousands of eager and qualified high school graduates will be able to fill the military ranks and strengthen both our military readiness and national security. We stand today with our Asian American, African American, Native American, Arab American, Jewish, gay, lesbian, bisexual, gender, and Latino brothers and sisters to ask Congress to allow high-achieving immigrant youth who only know the United States as their home an opportunity to contribute their entrepreneurial spirit, talent, and service to our nation. Latino power, si se puede. Thank you again, Margaret, for that. And thank you for discussing the Federal DREAM Act, which continues to be an issue that the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, the United States Student Association, United with DREAM, and many other organizations continue to see as a priority. It is such a privilege to be able to join you and hundreds of thousands of people across the country for one nation working together. It is important, though, to not only pass important pieces of legislation like the Federal DREAM Act, but to continue to fund K-12 and higher education at both the state and federal levels. We must provide these educational opportunities to maintain our competitive edge in this growing global economy. Additionally, these resources must be targeted to help populations and communities in the greatest need including youth, people of color, immigrants, working class, and the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender folks in this country. But the real reason why I'm standing here today is not just about passing legislation, but about something bigger, something visionary, something broader. It is my hope that we will begin to understand that our communities and our country is changing, and I believe changing for the better. We are more diverse. We, we are equipped with more tools to organize our peers and are moving in a direction of progress. The other day, I was joking with some of my colleagues and said, I am one nation. 
as someone who comes from a union family, who comes from an immigrant family, who was a first generation college student with more than $50,000 in debt, who is an openly gay Asian American, I represent I represent a diverse range of constituencies here, and we also have to remind ourselves the many, many people who could not have the chance to be here today. We can no longer work in silos, whether by campaign, issue, or community. There needs to be an understanding that the fight and struggle for economic justice and workers' rights is the same fight and struggle for LGBT equality and for civil and human rights is the same as the fight for immigrant justice and access to a quality education is the same fight for an environment and green jobs. Any jobs at all. Good jobs. Good jobs. It is important that we embrace these differences but also remain grounded in love in respect and humility. It is only then where we can truly be one nation working together. Kaya natin, si se puede, and yes we can. And I wanna do one more thing before we go. I want you all to join me in a really, really quick chant, okay? So what I'm gonna say is, when I say can't stop, you all say no stop. Can't stop. Can't stop. Thank you. Lewis Gutierrez and Darlene Nipper. I am honored to stand here today with Congressman Luis Gutierrez, a true advocate for justice. As a nine-term member of the U.S. House of Representatives, Luis Gutierrez has shown tireless leadership in championing the causes of minority and immigrant communities, as well as consumer and financial protection.